Well, my piano teacher was very unique and she always taught me something like play red, play blue, and she colored all the sheet music with a color pencil. It was easier to understand what kind of uh, emotions that you should play. She always told me that music comes from um, heart to heart, not from fingers to ears. I just kept writing as if I was writing a journal every day. It was like a music diary. Parents were just really supporting for their daughter doing something that I love. Living in the States was very different from living in Japan. There's a big cultural difference that was very inspiring to live in a place that I didn't grow up with and also to meet many musicians from all over the world who have same dream, make it in music. And that was another inspirational part in my college life. I think in both culture, there is good and bad. I want to take good things from both cultures and merge. I think that's what you can do when you live in different countries and experience different cultures. I played the piano all my life, basically, but I don't feel like I, I sacrificed anything because piano is now my professional occupation. It's my greatest hobby too. I loved playing piano. I made friends through piano. Whenever I play, there was always a smile around the piano of friends, family, or even strangers, you know, like when I play, they were really happy. Piano gave me so much. <laughs> For me, improvisation is very big part in my music. I I met music of jazz when I was eight years old because my first piano teacher happened to be a big jazz fan. That was the first time I discovered this uh, improvisation. You dance to music. <laughs> that was my first experience to feel the string. I always, always loved this part of improvisation because um, you go to the stage and you improvise. You know, it's like living life. You don't even know. Like, that what you want to play that night. And it's a big adventure and I always enjoy that. Every project is challenging. Without a challenge, no music. <laughs> Ama Jamo, who is uh, the pianist who opened my career, gave me a chance to go out to the world and play music. Just his attitude towards music, he's always looking for new things and always looking ahead. And when I ask him, what is your favorite album that you ever made? He always say, next one. And that's how I want to be. I'm playing with uh, this harpist, amazing harpist from Colombia. His name is Edmar Castaneda. And we just released an album together called Live in Montreal. It's going to be a pure music of passion and energy. The thing is, when you he hear just the, the instrumentation, piano and harp, you probably you know, don't understand what is it, piano and harp. But until I met Edma, I didn't know the harp can be played like that. He is like a guitar, bass and percussion in one. We play just duet, but people always ask after the show, is it only two people, <laughs> you know? Because we sound like a band, you know, apparently. It's a lot of uh, rhythmic, energy, very energetic show. For example, in one show, I see this older lady with pearl necklace in very nice suit. And next to her, I see a little boy who is probably studying piano. And next to him, I see a guy in Iron Maiden t-shirt. And to get this combination, I think it's just beauty of music. I don't know what, which essence attracted each of them but there was some kind of unity. It's just a miracle for me that when that happened, you know, like different generation, different gender, different races, music go beyond all the boundaries. In the beginning of my career, people assume that I sing. Whenever I go to the sound check, I see microphone right here. And I always had to say, uh, I don't sing, I just play. And I realized that was very rare. The female singers were more common and female ins instrumentalists uh, were less common. Then I was so happy that I started to not see the microphone in front of me. Ah, people know me, that I only play the piano now and I don't sing. 
I don't really think with gender. The artists, all great artists, inspires me. Doesn't have to be men, doesn't have to be women. Any gender, any generation, any races, as long as they are inspiring, that's the most important thing. I'm just being naturally myself. Only thing that I've been doing in all my career is I never push certain facts in me artificially, or I never hide anything. Not trying to push that I'm Asian or Japanese. Not trying to push that I'm woman. But I'm not hiding anything. I'm the naturally Japanese, naturally woman, naturally Hiromi. I think that's the key.